All right, we're going to show you today how to do uh, an INR check on uh, the Coag Check XS machine. Um, we're going to do a series of these so that you can figure out what you're doing if you're new to this. Um, it's going to range depending on what you had to drink the day before. You need to make sure you drink a lot of water. It makes things a lot easier on you. Um, your body's able to get the blood out quicker. Um, you also need to exercise a little bit in the morning. Don't do it first thing in the morning because your blood hasn't started pumping. You're obviously doing this because the doctor puts you on warfarin and he wants to keep track of what your thickness or thinness of your blood is. And uh, usually that's because of some condition like AFib or something like that. So that being said, basically what we have is the machine, the strips, and what I use is the uh, self-contained lancet because they're much easier for me to use. Um, you simply take it, you twist off the top, which then arms it, and when you push that on your finger, then it pops, gives you excruciating pain, mm -hmm. and then you get to pull the blood out of your finger. Um, these are the strips. They come in here along with the chip. You have to turn on the machine. I'll let it warm up just a second. And then you pop open the top, pull out one of the strips, being careful not to touch the gold edge because that's the contact. Then you stick it in the machine here. It will beep at you and it should give you a number. That number should match that number, which it does. So I put the right strip in the machine. And then we hit the M button and then it's going to count itself down. Um, it take anywhere from 25 to 35 seconds, again, depending on battery level, uh, temperature, all those things affect how quickly this machine works. And once it comes on, it's going to give me a, approximately 179 seconds, which is almost three minutes, in which to deposit blood here on the little divot on the machine. Um, I find it easier to have my wife likes to help. So she's going to squeeze the blood on my finger because a lot of times it doesn't like to come out. Um, I don't know if it's because I've been doing this for three or four years or just because I have bad blood. Okay, so you take your finger, you find a spot, not on the side, but more towards the center, and you push down on this. It clicks, and then hopefully you get blood out of it. And it looks like today is going to be a good one. And then we turn it upside down, use another finger to guide it in, make the deposit, and then it should beep at me, which it did. And then it's going to should give me a, a check mark and says QC. That means it's accepted the blood and it was a good sample. And it's now drawing the blood up into the machine where it's going to decide what my actual INR value is. And I'll know how thick or how thin my blood is. On mine, the doctor likes to keep me between 2.5 and 3.5, hopefully up closer to the top end because that's where I seem to function the best. And we'll see what happens there. Uh, it's taking a long time. Of course, it is cold out today. I don't know we're expecting so. 3.6, I'm just a little bit high. That means uh, that I'm, when this goes into my doctor, he's going to tell me probably to adjust my coumadin levels to bring it back down within range. 3.6 does not concern me. Anything over 4 is is cause for immediate concern for me, but at 3.6 I know he's going to tell me that I'm going to adjust my levels on what I'm taking or eat a salad. And uh, he will, this will be transmitted. I have to dial it in on the telephone. I'll be calling him, or we'll call him the machine. Uh, the computer will then take the information, disseminate it, and fax a report over to my doctor and he will give me a call most likely sometime tomorrow um, and tell me what to adjust to. And that's how you do INR check.